بسم الله بسم الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين I am super excited about today's video. Today is a DIY prayer garment video. It is a full tutorial for you guys. It is so super easy to make. Even if you have never sewed anything before, you can do this project. I am going to walk you through every step when fedger time comes, when your slot comes during the day, whether you're at work or whether you're at home. All you have to do is pop on your prayer garment. You'll be completely covered. When you follow this DIY tutorial, you're going to end up with a two-piece prayer garment. The first part of your prayer garment is going to be the long kimar. I think this one reaches down well past my waistline. So if you guys have been looking for a tutorial on how to make a really long kimar for more coverage or if you're nursing, um, then this is going to be a great video for you. And the second piece is a nice long maxi skirt with a really comfortable elastic waistband. You are going to have an amazing custom made prayer garment in whatever material you like. You can make tons of these. Maybe you want to make one for your purse. Maybe you want to make one for your desk at work. Uh, maybe you want to make one to keep in the car. I pray that you guys love this tutorial and that it is super easy for you. Of course, hashtag American Hijab on Instagram. Um, show me your amazing prayer garment creations. When you guys are making tons of salads in your new prayer garments, then please just remember to make dua for my family. I'm sending you so much love. If you guys want to see how to make your own two-piece prayer garments, then just keep watching. A few things that you're gonna need to make this project go really easily for you. The first is about four yards of fabric. If you're really tall, you might want to go for four and a half, at least for your first project, until you determine exactly how much you need. The second thing you're gonna need is scissors. You're going to need some elastic for your waistband. I think the width that I used was about 3 quarter inch, but you can use whatever width you are comfortable with. You're going to need a safety pin or some sort of tool that will help you get the elastic through the band. You will need a tape measure, plenty of straight pins to hold your fabric together. You're also going to need your sewing machine and of course some thread for your sewing machine. Once you have gathered all of your supplies, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is take your measurements. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna measure is our waist. This is super important because we're gonna need to know uh, what length to cut our elastic. The second measurement you wanna take is from the waist all the way down to the floor. And this is just gonna let you know how long your maxi skirt needs to be. So the first part of this tutorial is the kimar. So I'm going to start prepping about a yard and a half, maybe two yards I think I may have used here for the kimar. And you guys can make this pretty much as long as you want to. This was just the length that I was comfortable with. So you can see I have a fold at the top here and then there's two layers of material right there with the right sides facing each other. And next I measure down 11 inches from the fold and I place one pin there. This pin is going to let me know where I want to start my seam. So everything from the pin up to the fold is going to be the opening for my face and everything from the pin down is going to be a seam. Over on the other side of the kimar, I am just going to even out the material here. Here you see me just cutting off the excess and making sure that I have a nice straight line. Here at the back of the kimar, you can see me measuring down about 23 inches and then from the corner I measured in about 16 inches on the bottom and I am going to place a pin at both of those markings. Now once I have these two pins in place, I'm pretty much going to create kind of like a half moon shape with my cutting. So I'm going to cut from one pin to the other in a half moon shape. And this is what it looked like when I was all done cutting. I really just wanted to give it more of a rounded edge just because when you put on the Kimar it just drapes a little nicer when this edge is rounded. You can see that I still have my two layers of material and just so you guys know, when we go to the sewing machine at no point will we be sewing these two layers together. 
We will be hemming these edges all the way from the front seam, all the way up and around the back of the kimar, all the way back to the other side of the front seam. But no worries, I will show you guys exactly what I mean when we get to the sewing machine. So once again, here we have the opening for our kimar, and this is where our face is going to fit. I'm going to start right from that pin, and I'm going to sew one straight stitch all the way down to the bottom. For this seam, I'm using about a fourth of an inch seam allowance. I think I'm pretty much just lining it up at the end of my presser foot just to make it easy for me. And I'm going to backstitch right at the beginning and being sure to backstitch right at the end as well. Other than that, just sew straight down. So the next thing I wanted to do was just clean up those raw edges around the face opening a little bit. So I'm just folding my material back maybe about half an inch and I'm just going to use my sewing machine to put a straight stitch in and just fold down those edges so they stay nice and really clean looking. So all you have to do is fold back the material, the raw edge around the face opening, and start at the middle seam that we just sewed, and sew all the way around the face opening back to the other side of the middle seam. And this is pretty much what it will look like when you're done. Okay, so now we need to go to the bottom of our kimar and we're just going to put a hem in there once again just to clean up the edges of the material, make our kimar look really nice. And this was the part that I was telling you about during our pinning process. So you're going to start at that middle seam that we sewed just to keep our kimar closed. You're going to fold in maybe about half an inch to a full inch depending on what you feel comfortable with. You could even double fold if you want to make it look even nicer. I pretty much just eyeballed my hem here so like I said you can go with about a half an inch to a full inch whatever you're comfortable with fold it back and then just put a straight stitch through it that's all that it, there is start at the middle seam do a little back stitch at the beginning and a little back stitch all the way at the end this really is just one really long straight stitch that's all there is to it until you come back to where you started and there you have it. That really is all there is to making yourself a nice long kimar. So the first part of our prayer garment is done. So prepping our material for the skirt is pretty easy as well. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down about a yard of fabric on the floor with the right side facing up. Now I say about a yard of fabric because that that's about how much it took me to go from my waist to the floor. Then I took a second yard of fabric and laid it right over the top with the right side facing down. So you guys see the right sides are facing together and I'm just making sure that the material is even all around. And now here's where all those straight pins are going to come in handy. I pretty much used those straight pins and I pinned right down each side, each seam. One on the left and one on the right. Now if you guys saw my DIY Jill Bath video, then you know that I am not a big fan of pinning. But the material that I decided to use for this prayer garment was really slippery. So if you have an easier material to work with, then by all means you can skip this part and just go right ahead and sew those two seams together. So here at the top, I'm just taking a quick little guesstimate. I'm just eyeballing, putting my elastic down, and deciding about how much I'm going to have to fold over when I make the waistband for the skirt. This is good just to give yourself just a little heads up before you get to the sewing machine so you know about how big the opening for the waistband should be. 
Okay, so this is our last stop at the sewing machine and our prayer garment will be done. First things first, I am going to sew up those two seams, one on the left and one on the right, just a simple straight stitch all the way down. Be sure that you backstitch at the beginning and at the end, of course, just to make your seam a little bit more secure. Here I used more about a half an inch seam allowance and I just took the pins out as I went along. There you have it, that's our seam, nice and easy. Same thing on the other side. All right, so here I am measuring my waistband, even though your package will tell you how much it is, and I'm just determining how big I'm going to make this opening for the waistband, the waistband casing, if you will. So I think I used about a 3 4 inch elastic, so I'm gonna leave myself more like an inch, maybe an inch and a half for the waistband, since I know that this is a nice thick material and it will do a lot of bunching. So I fold my material down, I'm going to start at one of the side seams and sew a straight stitch all the way around and then when I come to the end, before I close the stitch all the way up, I'm going to leave myself maybe an inch, inch and a half of opening so that I can get my elastic band in there. And there you have it. There you can see that little opening that I left. Now I'm going to go ahead and thread my elastic band through and then I can close that opening up. So uh, I told you guys in the beginning, you can use either a safety pin or they have these tools that you can pretty much buy at any sewing store or craft store. Uh, I think I bought this one at Joann's where you just loop the elastic through it and I think it's just a teeny bit easier than using a safety pin. Um, so I'm going to use my little tool here. I'm going to thread my elastic elastic through and then I am going to use this to put my elastic through the waistband. So once my elastic is all the way through, then I'm going to turn my sewing machine to a zigzag stitch and I am going to go back and forth across this elastic, just zigzagging back and forth to secure those two ends together. You guys, be really sure that your elastic is not twisted up inside that band, so make sure that it is laying completely flat so once you put it back in, then you have no issues. So after I was done with my zigzag stitch, I just stretched the material around the elastic band and now I'm going to flip back to a straight stitch on my sewing machine and I am just going to sew up that opening. Okay, now the bottom of the skirt. This is our last step. I'm so excited, you guys. All right, I told you guys this is super easy. All right, so for our very last thing, we are going to put a hem on the bottom of our maxi skirt. This is gonna be the same exact way. You just put a hem on the kimar. So you're just gonna fold back maybe half an inch to an inch of material and you are just gonna put a straight stitch in it. That's it, going all the way around the bottom of the skirt and you are done. There you have it ladies. Thank you so much for sewing along with me. I pray that your prayer garments are a huge blessing to you. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Assalamu alaikum.